Hey, welcome back to part number three of my semi-second scale growler build. So last week we saw I did most of the assembly, we've got the fuselage together. This week we're going to do the fun part, which is painting. So we're going to start priming and then we've got the three color colors. So it'll be a little bit tricky. We've got the ghost gray and the light blue and the dark blue for the scheme. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this episode, we're going to talk about painting and get this beautiful kind of naval centennial scheme on this jet. So firstly, um, we're going to use two bulbs decals and it has a really nice big color print out here. So as you know, we're going with this. So it's light ghost gray in the bottom, like, then like a light blue and a dark blue. Also on the bottom here, you can see the end of the, the, end of the wings are light blue as well. So four stages. So we're going to start with priming, and then we're going to hit the light ghost gray. Then once that's dry, we're going to mask it, and then we'll go with light blue, then mask that, and do the dark blue. So we'll go up in colors. So light to dark. Now we'll be using my favorite light ghost gray for the, at the moment, which is LP thirty seven lacquer for the light, light ghost gray. And then the blues. This is a really hard color. The only colors you could match out the bottle were these little testers and enamels. So, I'm not usually a big user, well, I'm not really use enamel paints much, just because it takes so long to dry. It should go down fine, it's just, um, rather than lacquer paints taking literally minutes to dry, these guys might take days, if not a week, to dry each color. So, I'm going to have to be really careful. So, we'll get, once we get to the light blue on, we'll let it dry, and let it sit there for a few days to really kind of um, make sure it is, is fully dry before we start masking over it and stuff and touching it. So with power of editing, we'll, we'll flip forward a few days and then we'll get the dark blue on at the very end. So we're really excited, um, looks a really nice scheme. Um, so let me just talk real quick about the paints we're gonna use. So, I don't know why they do this, but these little tiny little tested enamel pots, you can barely, barely read the, um, what color it is, it's that such tiny text. But anyway, so light blue is gonna be GL light blue, which is 1108. And a dark blue is GL dark blue 1111. So four ones. 1111. You don't, I don't think you can see that. But. So there are two colors we're going to use. Actually, if you see, I actually just stirred a little bit last night just to see how what they look like in a pot. And I just added a little bit to a bit of tape just to see. So you can see, that's the colors. And even. Oh yeah, they seem yeah, they seem dry, come like glossy kind of color. But yeah, it looks a pretty good color match to what the real thing is. So these two, um, I tried various mixes of like Tamiya paints and other ones of paints I have, but just I just couldn't get the right color. So looking online, I did find somebody use these colors that recommends it, and it did like I say it does look a pretty good match. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a spray booth and we're gonna paint the um, whole aircraft in primer. And my primer of choice, as always, is Mr. Surfer Black 1500. Once we've sprayed that and it's dry, we'll go in with some white and hit, hit the set on the panels to create a pre-shading shallow coat. Um, and that is really it for now. Um, typically, the first thing you do painting is paint the canopy, um, the inside color. It's going to be black for this one, so rather than obviously using black paint, I'll just, this is black anyway, so I'll just go ahead and just spray the primer. We'll be good to go with that. Um, if it was like a gray inside, we'd just spray gray first and then um, the primer on top of that. That kind of makes sense. So enough waffling, let me switch the camera over to the bench and let's get starting with the, um, the priming and the shadow coat.
Okay, back at the bench. And we're primed and shadow coated and ready to go. If you've seen that video, you see I had a few little issues. The both the Mr. Servicer and the white paint was real kind of speckling. It wasn't atomizing very good. Um, I had to thin it down a little bit more. Um, I got it down, but basically what I did was I just took a um, I got a bit of Tamiya sponge. This is 3000 grit, or you can use a little bit of a fine kind of sanding stick, whatever. And I just very finely sanded it down to get rid of some of the little bumps and stuff. Um, you see some of these little dots and stuff still in here. It's not a big issue at all. We're not gonna see that once the paint goes on. It's a dark colored paint on top. Plus it actually just adds to weathering, so it's not a big problem at all. Um, if that was the main paint coat, it might be an issue, but being primer, no issues at all. Um, so yeah, it's good. So I think the main issue for that is, I think the airbrush just needs cleaning. I have been using for a long time, same airbrush for acrylics and lacquers, and that's never really a good thing. I literally, just a few days ago, purchased a second airbrush, same one again, another Procon PS289, exactly the same 0.3 needle, so I'm now gonna split them up and have one for um, acrylic and one for lacquer, so it makes it a little bit easy. So I just need to kind of fill strip my airbrush before I put any more paint down and just make sure that's, um, get all the, make sure there's nothing in there, and it's fully clean and then good to go, and then once that nozzle's clean and everything, it, I should, should be able to atomize the paint a little bit better. Um, so that's what, if you notice that, what, what that was. So, just to recap, I primed with Mr. Surface at 1500. Sorry, Mr. Surface at 1500. I keep calling it 500. It's 1500 black. It's the only black you can get, which is 1500. They don't do a black in 500, just a gray. And just paint, um, just whatever white paint you have. I happen to use, I think I used, started with Tamiya XF2, and then that wasn't going down so good for the airbrush, so I went, switched to um, Game Air White. Um, a Vallejo. Um, like I said, I got some, just need to clean that airbrush out and make sure there's no contamination and stuff. But yeah, so happy it turns out. So you can see it goes really black, um, and once you've got that wired on and kind of pick areas out, really goes, it turns out gray, but you've got the shadow effect. It's much easier doing this and having to go down, spray it gray, and put all those black lines on, which people do, and it doesn't look quite right. So I just kind of like throw it this way. This is how I do armor. Just um, uneven, messy, just creates a shadow coat underneath the gray. While I was at it, you see I painted the base, wheel base. Um, these will get masked up before I put the grey on. And the black underneath and, and just dusting the white on, it really gives that right, really nice effect. Right there. And um, obviously the intakes added a little bit of foam in there. We know, remember we painted those white before we actually put them into the, built the aircraft. Well, I just put foam in just to protect it. So when, when we're done painting, the foam will come out and then the white will still be behind it. So there you go, so that's that part done. So next up, we're going to go ahead and add the gray, um, which is light ghost gray, which I'll just pull this back and show you again. Basically gray is all the underneath. It's these little guys, pods at the side, which in hindsight, you probably paint those separately and then add them on the end, but um, I just have to mask it. So it's paint white underneath, and then once that dry, you kind of mask off. Um, it's kind of wiggly kind of camo pattern. Oh, you can't see it, there you go. Um, for the blue. So grey on the side and a nose, same colour. So nose and across, fuel tanks and the underneath. But no, not the very end of the wings. It's this pod things, but this is the light blue. So um, being the first colour, we don't have to worry about masking anything. We're just going to put it down where it needs to be. And then we'll worry about masking when we get to the other colours. So there you go. So light goes grey and LP37 for me, which is lacquer. So we'll shoot, once I clean my airbrush out and stuff, we'll shoot that. This has had a couple hours to dry, so it's ready to go. Um, we'll let that dry, and then we'll move on to the blues, which as I mentioned earlier, will be the te testers enamel. Um, so these enamels will need some time to dry between each each coat. It won't be one of those things where we just mask a couple of hours. It might be a few days before I move on to the next one. But with power of editing and YouTube, it'll be seamless. So you'll see it all in this video. So <laughs> enough waffling, as always, I'm sorry to get carried away waffling. Let's get switch, um, back to the bench and let's get the grey on.
Okay, we're masked up and ready for the light blue. So, we these guys right here on the wings are going to be light blue. And then the swirly bit and the bottom is going to be light blue. And the top's going to be up dark blue. Using my usual camo clever putty. Love this stuff. Just manipulates it really good um, to where I need to be. I'll spray, then pretty quickly I'll remove it, maybe within 10 minutes. I don't, it self levels, so I won't leave it on too long, but really like the way um, I just backfilled it off with a bunch more just to cover it. So blue, blue on the sides, um, and that's going to be pretty much it. So let's switch over to the spray booth and let's get it sprayed. Okay, with the power of editing, we are back three days later. So, Tester's website recommends for enamel paints to leave them to dry for 48 to 72 hours. So, as I said, I left it for three days. Um, so, hopefully, we're good. I'm always a little nervous about enamels, but it seemed okay. I tried a little bit of masking and pulled it off, and no real issues. So, the gray is done, the light blue is done, and mask. Now we hit the top with the dark blue. Um, the dark blue is going to be Tester's enamels 1111. So, four ones. So we'll get ourselves to the spray booth, we won't need too much paint, and we'll get the top sprayed, and then leave it for another three days or so for that to dry. Um, I, you just see why I kind of like lacquer paints. Lacquer paints dry, spray beautifully and dry in minutes. Um, now we'll spray nicely, but like I say, you have to wait days between each one. So um, no big rush, but anyway, so let me switch over to the spray booth and let's get the dark blue sprayed on. Another few days has passed and we finally done with the paint. Well, I'm calling it that done. It, I'm not gonna lie, I had some issues. The I'm not normally an enamel user, but it, it bled through the Tamiya masking tape. Um, I make dozens of models and absolutely love the yellow Tamiya masking tape and never have any issues, but I had some bleed. So um, the issue being enamel paint is when you go back to correct it, it's every time you paint something it's three days drying time. So on a normal kit, if I messed up just need to mask something real quick and just you know, spray it in you know we're good to go in a couple of hours whereas this I have to put it to the side for another three days so it's just a little bit infuriating but we're on uh, the dark blue is a bit of a strange color it's more of an like now I look at it on it on the aircraft it looks it's kind of reflecting a lot off it but it's very shiny um, when I put the flat coats down and stuff it's going to correct all that that's not a problem the sheen but the color almost looks a little candy like like maybe like a candy like um, blue for a truck or a car or something but Anyway, I went through, fixed it um, best I could. The front isn't the best. Um, it's, about to get, it's still a little bit wet, so I'll, just t I'll touch it very carefully on these parts. The front here, it's okay. It's not, you know, it's not my usual job, but um, it, it is what it is. There's three different colors on there. If I was, if I was keep, I, I corrected it and masked up the bleed. If I was going to go through and tidy up again, I got every color has three, three more days. Um, at the end of the day, I just need to move on with this. I, 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 if I just keep on this, I'm losing the mojo, so I can't keep. You know, put it aside for three days, paint, put it aside for another three days, paint the yellow color. So we'll get moving on. It's not going to be a big deal. By the time I had the, the pound line wash and the weathering and stuff, it's, it's going to cover up any of those imperfections. But it is what it is. Um, overall, okay. So there's the three colors. So you got the gray and the underside. Um, oh, sounds like I've got an eBay alert. Um, you got light blue and then the dark blue. 
and then obviously the tails are the light blue too so what goes on there let's hold this so when that goes on like that it gives you a little bit more color change too um, so that's really where I'm at so I'm gonna let this dry um, it's still a little tacky like I said just did a few little touch ups so I'm gonna put this aside let it dry for another three days and then um, add a clear coat to seal the paint in and get ready for decals um, so next time by the time we come back next week We'll be clear coated and we're ready to move on and get these decals on and get this build going along a little bit. Uh, all my other little parts are painted, like the pylons and stuff. So, you know, it's we're quite far along. Um, just a few, like I say, a few little frustrations with the with the tape bleed and using the enamel paints, but it is what it is. Um, if I hold up in the light, you can see the, the dark blue there. A little better, maybe. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Again, this is Richie from Auto Hobbies. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you again next week. So thank you, and goodbye.